All right, this is the book of Acts. We are in now chapter five. Um, let's do a quick review. Uh, the beginning review, the, Luke wrote the book of Acts. And Acts uh, the book of Acts describes the history of the church, looking at how the church was birthed by a group of believers totaling about 120 people who were gathered in the upper room, waiting on the promise of the Holy Spirit that was spoken of by Jesus Christ. And remember, the real church is the collective body of believers. The collective body of believers are called out of the world and into a transformational relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, uh, we are not, um, when, it, when it talks about we're being we're called out of the world, doesn't mean that we are uh, uh, separated uh, to the point to where we are uh, not able to function in the world or even um, be a part of the world and so that we can draw them unto the Lord. Um, we as a universal body of believers, what we're supposed to do is be a reflection of God in the world. When the world sees us or when unbelievers, well, I, I, I think I like to use this word more than just the world, unbelievers. Uh, when they uh, see us, they should be able to see the reflection of God through us in how we live and how we operate and how we act. Uh, we're to lead and demonstrate kingdom living through the help of the Holy Spirit. We are, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching and preaching that on Sundays now, uh, the keys to kingdom living. So as we uh, uh, incorporate this into our lives, we're to demonstrate it. Demonstrating it by showing the world or unbelievers how being a believer has great benefits for us and for all for whosoever believes. That's the word of God. And we're to work together for the glory of God. We don't uh, separate ourselves even as believers. You know, you got, uh, 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 what I'm trying to think of the world that they call cliques and so many different, you know, uh, opinionated groups within the body. And that's not working together. We are to be on one accord, just like Jesus had said that we had to be. And that's how the Holy Spirit fell, was because they were all together on one accord, having one purpose and one vision in mind. And that's how we are to do. And we are to be, uh, we're to advance the kingdom of God here on the earth. And I want you to understand, it doesn't say, it doesn't say in the kingdom of heaven, this is the kingdom of God, how God established the rule here on the earth. We are to advance that, meaning we are to build it up. We are to put it forward. We are to show how God's kingdom on the earth is a reflection of God's kingdom. God's kingdom on the earth should be a reflection of God's kingdom in heaven. The only way it's going to be shown uh, uh, on the earth is through us, through how we operate, how we believe, how we walk in faith, how we walk in trust. How we prosper, uh, the authority that's been given to us, how we are givers, and how we protect what God has given us through our health, through our minds, through our speech, and everything. That's how we advance the kingdom of God on the earth. So a quick review of last week, uh, Acts chapter 4. Peter and John were arrested. They were released and encouraged not to talk about Jesus again. Yeah, right. Peter, John, and the believers instead prayed for boldness to share God's word. They didn't care what they were told what not to do. They just asked God, but they wanted God to give them more boldness to not care about what other people thought about them as they continued the process of speaking, of talking about Jesus and sharing God's word. Um, the early church grew because of their faithfulness towards God, willingness to share themselves with others, and trust in the leadership. Those are the things that we talked about in chapter four. Are there any questions? We got any comments over what we went over last week? Okay, not. Right, let's go forward. Uh, Acts chapter five. Uh, Acts 5 shifts from the man 
who was healed to others in leadership. Acts 5 had 42 verses divided into five sections. First section is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is going to be verses 1 through 11. Continued growth of the church, verses 12 through 16. Leaders put in prison again, verses 17 to 21. Leaders on trial again, verses 22 to 32. Lastly, what to do with the people of God, verses 33 through 42. So let us begin. This is Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. Uh, it says, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, uh, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. I want to stop here because we have to go back and remember what we read about in chapters 3 and 4. How they sold their possessions and gave it and brought it all to the apostles so that they could distribute it out to those that were in need. So here you have a man and a wife who sold their possessions, but they decided to keep a part of the proceeds instead of giving it to the apostles as they were supposed to. All of it. But Peter, and so chapter, uh, verse 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the lamb for so much. She said, yes, for so much. So what she's saying is, Peter said, like, did you sell the lamb for 5000 She's like, yes, I sold the lamb for 5000 yeah. yeah, but you didn't bring 5,000. Then Peter said to, her, he said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. I want to let me let me let me um, correct myself. The lamb was probably sold for ten thousand. But Peter asked, "Did you sell it for five? She says, "Yes, we sold it for five. And he knows that that was a lie. So she conspired with her husband. We're only going to give this amount. And this is what we're going to say that it was sold for because we keeping this amount for us. And that goes against chapters three and four regarding how the people would come together and <clears throat> Share what they had with everyone. So section one, we're dealing with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ananias and Sapphira sold lamb but kept some of the proceeds from it. Sapphira was aware of it. Peter said they lied to God, Holy Spirit, 
verse 3, and God, verse 4. And that's what they did. They lied. You know, you can you can you can tell uh 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 me anything. You can tell your spouse anything, you can tell your friends, you can tell anybody anything. You can lie all day long. But one thing, person, you cannot lie to is God. No, well, two people. You can't lie to God, you can't lie to yourself. Because you know the truth, and God knows the truth. So they were saying, was, you know, you, 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 you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. That's way worse than lying to me. The Holy Spirit must be God. So we're talking about the Trinity here. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There are those that want to uh, put the Holy Spirit as a separate entity. And he's not. He is part of the triune body, mind, spirit. Same with us. Our, our, our body, our soul, our spirit. Body, our mind, our spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All three. So the Holy Spirit must be God. And he is. Results of their sin, lying to the Holy Spirit, they both drop dead. I don't believe God has gone and is doing that. Well, I can't say that. I don't know. And I'm not going to say that. But one thing I will say is we wonder why we go through some of the things we go through. We wonder why we have sickness. We wonder why, you know, we cannot um, um, progress. We aren't successful. We're not prosperous. Things that are happening, and a lot of it is due to what we do to the Holy Spirit. How we negate him. How we know we, we we have him in our lives, but we don't utilize him as he should be utilized. As the one who teaches us, guides us, and helps us right every day, all day. So therefore, we're, we're, we're putting him off on the shelf. And then we'll, we'll lie by saying, well, you know, uh, 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 I know I was supposed to do this and I know I was supposed to do that, but uh, this and that thing came up and nothing really came up. You just didn't want to do it. And you're not lying to me or to anybody else. You who have the Holy Spirit, you're really lying to the Holy Spirit. Because God has given directions of the things he wants us to do and what we should be doing. And when we don't do them, or do things contrary to them, we're hurting, you know, we're, we're, we're in essence slapping God in the face. And he caused these two to drop dead. Any questions? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, this is um, part two, this is number two. Uh, Acts 5, 12 through 16. But through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, all with one accord in, Sol in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. The believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities of Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. They were all healed. So we're looking at even the power of the Holy Spirit, how he's working through, how he worked through the apostles, how he worked through believers. They were added to the church continually because of how the Holy Spirit and the word of God is being spread. And then you got people who are understanding. They, they heard how Peter and John uh, were instrumental in the man who was uh, the beggar, poor, was healed where he could walk. 
So now it's like, oh, we know this man's got something going on. Let's bring everybody out. Matter of fact, if, if he could just walk by and let his shadow touch on him, we know that that's enough to make him heal. That was also a part of their faith. Part of their faith, just like the just like the men who took the roof off of the building to lower in their friends so that Jesus could heal them. Multitudes brought in from all surrounding cities, sick people, those who had demonic um, possession and oppression, and they were all healed. So, section two, continued growth of the church. Evidence of a growth movement. They just kept coming. Many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. The unity was great among believers. And multitudes were joining. I mean, every day, there were just, just gobs of people coming and receiving and believing. The sick were being healed. And people with unclean spirits or demonic spirits were healed. Everyone's needs were met both in the group and in the community. So let's also see Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 23 to 24, compared to Acts 5. So Matthew 24, 23 to 24, so says that Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all sick people who were affected, were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics. And he healed them. So we're seeing the same thing here in, in chapter 5 of Acts. Same thing that Jesus did. What did Jesus say? These and greater things than these shall you do because I'm going to the Father. When I go to the Father, the Holy Spirit is going to come and you'll be able to do greater things than I was able to do in the three years, three and a half years I had my ministry here. So this is just, you know, showing that Jesus spoke the word, he did the work, the word came true, Holy Spirit came, and those who were able to receive were able to do the things that Jesus did. Same way it is today, we are able to do the things that Jesus did, we only believe. Any questions on the second section? Okay. Acts 5, 17 to 21. Now it gets kind of crazy. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. We talked about the Sadducees last week. They don't believe in resurrection. They believe that when you're dead, there's this darkness is bleak. It's over. There's no, there's no resurrection. There's no going to heaven for you. It's just over when it's done, it's done. Says, and they were filled with indignation. They were indignant. They were just like ticked off. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They put them back in prison. But at this, check this out. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. When they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. I want to stop right here before I go further. You're in prison. They know you're in prison. Here comes an angel at nighttime, breaks you out of prison, but doesn't tell you go hide. Tells you go and present yourself in the temple. Stand in the middle of the temple and tell the people all about your life. All what has happened to you. All that you have experienced. Even to this point where they put you in prison, but an angel came and broke you out. That's deep. 
So section three, leaders put in prison again. High priests and religious leaders were furious at the apostles and had them thrown into prison. What were they? What were they? I was, what were they so mad about? Jealous. Jealousy. Not only jealousy, but the fear of losing their position as usurpers of authority over the people because of Jesus Christ setting them free. And you shall know. What is it? Uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Jesus Christ brought the truth. They didn't want the truth. They wanted there to be their word and their word alone. We stand on Moses and his word, and if you ain't with us, you don't deserve to live, actually. We're putting you in prison. We're kicking you out. We don't want you talking about this Jesus. We don't want you even thinking about this Jesus. We don't want you talking about his life. Shut up and let us do our things as high priests and leaders. An angel of the Lord made a way of escape and told them to speak in the temple. Didn't tell them go home and hide yourself, not, not worry about anything. Matter of fact, go and show yourself. And even you, look, I don't care if you tell them that I broke you out. That just solidifies more of what we believe is what God wants you to say. To show how great and powerful our God is. When you don't hide the truth and you speak the word. The apostles spoke in the temple in the morning while the entire council and other Jewish leaders met to discuss what to do with the apostles. So they're in here pre preaching and teaching and telling people in the temple while you got all the leaders, they all band together and they're like, okay, what are we going to do with these guys? We got them in prison. See, this time they don't know that that, that they've been uh, set free by the angel. They're all still talking about what they're going to do to these men because of what they did in talking about God and Jesus. That's deep. Any questions about number three? All right, let's continue. Acts 5, 22 to 32. This is section four. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely. And the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now that's, that's really crazy. <laughs> Door was locked. The guards were still there. But there was nobody inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, look, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. So we're going <laughs> to, I can see him pleading, just come, come, we know you're out. We don't <laughs> Because if we do, we know you guys is talking this truth, and these people may jump on us for grabbing y'all. So please, no, no violence. Let's just can we all just get along? <laughs> and when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, "Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name?" And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Talking about Jesus. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. This is the second time he had said that to them. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Well, you know, that really ticked them off right there, too. 
Because how could this man, matter of fact, they even ask each other, who are you to forgive sins? Ooh, so you're saying this who God exalted, you made him a prince and a savior and gave him the ability to, re to, 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 to give repentance to Israel and forgive sins? Ooh. We are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Yeah, they just, they just. See this, when you're bold enough and you don't have no fear and you don't care what nobody says, you'll say what, what, what God has you say. And you don't care who thinks about it. You don't care who's talking about it. You don't care what people feel about you or think about you. You just do what God said, do and watch God do the work. So section four, leaders on trial again. The officers went to get the apostles, but they were gone. Someone told the council that they were in the temple preaching. The officers went and found the apostles and brought them back to the council peacefully. They asked them, didn't we tell you not to mention Jesus' name again? Key verse, verse 29. I love what they said. We ought to obey God rather than man. Meaning God tells us to do something. We're going to do it. We don't care what you think. We're gonna, your, your rules do not supersede God's rule. God's rule, God's word is to be obeyed rather than yours. Because yours is full of junk. God's is all truth. And his word said, we'll know the truth, and the truth will make us free. We are witnesses to God raising Jesus from the dead for the repentance of Israel. And God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. We've seen it. We were there. We know he died. We saw him buried. But guess what? We also saw him arise from the dead. And it was all so that Israel can repent of their sins, believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And not only that, he gives his Holy Spirit, God in the spirit form, to dwell in us forever. But only to those who obey him. Any questions on number four? All right. Then this is number five. Acts 5, 33 to 42. When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Yeah, they was really ticked off when they heard that. Then one of the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. Let them step out the room. We got to talk. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. That 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 right there is him telling them. You you need to be very careful what you go to these men. These men have already started a movement. This is him in actuality trying to say, you're going to make a martyr out of these men. Familiar mouth. He was also the one that taught Paul. He's the one that taught Paul. Paul's teacher. He was Paul's teacher. And he gave him, he told him about this uh, Theodos. Claiming to be somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm this. See, this is the thing about Peter and John. They never, on the apostles, they never claimed that they were anything other than disciples of Christ. They didn't put it in themselves that they were anything. But this guy, Theodos, rose up. He claimed to be somebody. It says a number of men, about 400 people joined him. Sound like a cult to me. 
and he was slain. They killed him. And all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. So if you people, y'all kill these men, all those who you thought were going to follow you, they're going to split. And you ain't never going to have power and authority over anyone ever again because of what you're doing to these men. You already did it to their leader, Jesus. Look what happened. And look what happened. Now you got thousands of people joining the movement. You kill these guys, y'all ain't going to have nobody. So, this is a question and answer period. I got the answers and they'll come up. But what to do with the people of God? Number one, who stood up and spoke to the council? Gamaliel, a well-respected teacher of the law. He was a Pharisee who trained Saul slash Paul. What was his advice to the council in verses 38? To 39. You better think about it. You better, better leave them alone. Leave them alone. You better think about it. If it's man's doing, it will die. But if it's God doing, you can't stop it anyway. Mm -hmm. Number three, how did the council respond to the advice? They accepted Gamaliel's <laughs> advice, they beat them. And forbid them from speaking about Jesus again. Hmm. What was the apostles' reaction? They praised God for suffering for his namesake and did not stop talking about Jesus. Hmm. Awesome. Did you, skip some verses? you know what? I'm 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 wondering if I did. Let me go back here. I think you did, bro. You did. 33 to 42. Or 36. I sure did. I sure did. I sure did. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Um, read that on your own. <laughs> I stopped at 36, so 37 to 40. I don't know how I lost. I don't know how I I uh, I, I I lost those that scripture. You know what? Uh, uh, well, that's okay. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and read that. As I do. Um, yeah, that's important. It's very important. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this first because uh, we'll we'll go back to this. Um, how do I do this? Let me do this. Let's do this. Um, I want to do this. Let's, I know where to go. Where am I at? Uh, right here. Let's do this. Dun, dun, dun. That was what, 32 to 46? I think it was. I'm going to change it from. Was it 42? Was it, I'm sorry, it'll stop at 42. I want to go to uh, this here. Let's do a go. And let's see, I don't know if I can make it any bigger. But we'll try. But it's very important that we, go to the three lines. that we have this, yes. And, okay. I stopped at verse 36. So, 37, it says, after this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the sense. What? It was another guy. Amelia. Okay, yes. He gave a couple examples. Yes, he did. Okay, after this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan of or this work of is of men, 
it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found <laughs> to fight against it. And they agreed with him when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Isn't that something? They got, they, they got beat. And then they came out rejoicing, happy, happy that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ. Okay. All right. So the breakthrough in Acts 5, the Holy Spirit sees and knows everything. We got Ananias and Sapphira. We should not let others try to intimidate us when sharing about our God. You can say what you want to say. You're not going to stop me from sharing about God. When God is in the work, no one can stop it, not even our enemies. Mm. All right, so are there any questions about chapter five? There's a lot going on, but what I love about it mostly is the boldness that they prayed for, God gave it to them. And they didn't just, okay, you give me that, so what? They used it. They didn't care if they were put in prison. They got beaten. They were just ostracized. They, and they came out, the Bible says they came out rejoicing. We're happy to do this. For the whole thing of Christ. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing this for Christ. What about us today? Are we bold enough to stand up for Christ in regards to criticism, in regards to people laughing at us, in regards to people trying to ostracize us, get us in trouble, or to, you know, just be downright mean, hateful, hurtful, even try to do bodily harm. They did it for them. Don't think they're not going to do it to us. So we've got to make sure that what we do, we do for Christ. We do for God. Amen. And that everything we do will always bring honor and glory to his name and not our own. So our next lesson will be the book of Acts, part six.